Um, do Shiites give as much today give as much importance to Jerusalem? You're as... wonderful. This is an excellent question. From a Shiite point of view, is anything the Sunnis done have done is in essence destruction of Islam. It's perversion of Islam. This city was Jerusalem became holy. Sunnis made it. It is not a holy city for them. Mm -hmm. um, they, if anything, uh, they understand this is nothing more than a Sunni invention, which is bid in Arabic, which is innovation. You're not allowed to innovate. So why did Khomeini and why did all the his cohorts? Al why, right? why did they do this? And it's, this shows the smartness of Iranians. They are the most sophisticated people in the Middle East. They're very smart and very cunning. And they have had to in order to survive the onslaught of Islam because even to this day there's a big argument in Iran, Iran versus Islam, of the culture. Mm -hmm. How do we survive as who we are? Now, watch this. Khomeini got off the plane, and no one really, uh, this is in the 1979, yeah. and everybody's concerned about what he said about the Shah, what he said about America, what he said about Israel, but he said something else first. I have come to rectify a wrong which took place 1,400 years ago. For Americans, anything that happened, yes, oh, that's history, who cares? Right. But and this is part of a world where you never forget. Things are out of balance. They must be corrected. Who are the rightful rulers of Islam? The Shiites. Now, what Khomeini's goal was to say here, I'm going to take a Sunni agenda, which was Jerusalem, and all these Arab leaders have not been able to conquer it, get it back for Islam. Mm -hmm. I will do that. I will show you the way. We Shiites will show you the way. And therefore, um, it will show that Shiism is correct, and all of you should convert to, um, to, Shia, to, to Shiism and, and to leave Sunnism. Now, to us, that may sound crazy, but for them, this is alive and well. All of the Muslim leaders... Uh, the Sunni leaders of the entire Arab world, every country was ruled by, uh, by Sunnis at the time, understood Khomeini very well. The rectifying the wrong, which took place 1,400 years before, was that um, in the war between Muhammad's family, which became the Shiites, mm -hmm. versus the Meccan aristocracy, which, became the, which was later known as the Sunnis, the wrong side won. I, Khomeini, have come to correct this. So Jerusalem becomes a pawn in the Sunni-Shiite war, but this place has no significance whatsoever to the Shiites. And I have been told this by grand ayatollahs, who supposedly won't deal with a Jew, they, because they'll, they'll get, you know, religiously unclean. Mm -hmm. um, but they also see many, much, many of the Shiites, and none of them will say this in 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 public because they're afraid that they live in a Sunni sea, meaning it's 80%, about 86% of 1.6 million Muslims, 1.6 billion, are Sunni. They're 12% and there's a rest of few other small things. And they're petrified of what the Sunnis will do to them. It's sort of equivalent to what happened to the Jews when they lived in Europe in the 19th century and before. You never knew when the next sort of pogrom-like thing was going to happen to the Jews. And that's how the Shiites feel about the Sunnis. And they have reason to believe that historically. Sure. And so they're looking for allies. And when America liberated Iraq with its Shiite majority, which America refused to believe that it had before, but it became clear in the first elections, the Shiites at first in Iraq felt liberated from two yokes. Number one, the Arab Sunni yoke, and number two, from the Persian Shiite yoke, because they're Arab Shiites. Oh, so the Both Arab Shiites are against the uh, Persian Shiites. The, if I can, I don't know <laughs> if we could say this, the way the Persian, how do you know about a culture? What are its proverbs? The Persians look at the Arabs, they call them lizard eaters and rodent eaters. They're desert nomads, inferior. That's mm -hmm. what they think of Arabs. And I will say this, I'll clean this up a bit, but what, per, what Arab Shiites say about the Persians is if you break open the bone of a Persian, S-H dot T <laughs> comes out. Mm -hmm. So you can see how much love they have for each other. The great late scholar Fuad Ajami of, um, uh, of the Middle East called the Arab Shiites the stepchildren 
of the Muslim world. Why? The Shia, the, the Persians who are the largest Shiite group hate the Arab Shiites because they're Arabs, and the Sunnis, Sunni Arabs hate the Shiite Arabs because they're not Sunni. Right. So they're lost, period.